So, it's been a fair while since I did one of these. Over a year, I think. Hell, I think maybe the last one was in 2022. But I have seen a few comments regarding me picking up where I left off, and I figured, eh, why not? May as well. And so today I returned to doing Miraculous Retrospective Reviews, watching old episodes of Miraculous Ladybug that came out before I did reviews on the channel, and giving my thoughts. And from what I recall of my reviews of Season 1 so far, I very much felt like Season 1 was a major slog, so... This'll be fun. But yeah, time to take a trip down memory lane and have a watch of Darkblade. Okay, so we start off with a look at Marinette in her bedroom, where she's constructed a box that's designed to protect her diary. A diary that contains information such as, I am Ladybug. Doesn't feel like it's a very intelligent move to include all of that information in her diary, if I'm being perfectly honest. Especially since you could just break the box open to get the diary if you really wanted to. It's not like this is an industrial lock. But yeah, guess kids are stupid sometimes, what can I tell you? On the news, we learn that Mayor Bourgeois has been elected for a successive fourth term as Mayor of Paris, which is an impressive feat, as I'm pretty sure that they have introduced a term limit long ago. You can only be elected twice, but not for this man. He found a way to get it done, and yeah, he was elected, and it reminds Marinette that they have a class election the very next day, which of course Marinette is dreading, as Chloe's running for it. And I gotta say, how the hell would anybody in their right mind even vote for Chloe to begin with? They all know she sucks. I literally could only see Chloe, Sabrina, and then Kim the Simp voting for her. What's going on here? Tiki then suggests that Marinette should run for office, and Marinette, in a moment of clarity, remembers that she's already struggling to keep up with her life as is. So why would she add more responsibilities that she needs to juggle? Just seems like a recipe for disaster. We then learn that Andre's opponent in the polls, the Swordmaster from Marinette's school, scored the lowest number of votes in the history of the city. And I mean, come on. They're acting like this is America where you vote for the president directly, but having looked it up, I thought you vote for your chosen party in your specific electoral area in Paris, which determines who sits on the council. And then all those councillors are gonna come together and they're gonna choose the mayor. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. On top of that, all these people usually have political parties they're part of. And I'm just sitting here thinking, this show was made by French people, wasn't it? Do they just not know? Do they not care? Are they simplifying it? What's going on here? Marinette then realises that once again, she is late to school. Imagine being so late when you actually live next door to the school. What a disgrace. And so of course she barges in just as Chloe's being announced as the candidate, with Alia telling her that Chloe's running again, and that she's been the class rep since kindergarten. A bit of exposition, but stuff that Alia shouldn't know. Because after all, this season will later establish in the origin episodes that this is Alia's first year in the school, first year in the peer group. She's not met the other characters before, so weird. Kim then tries to name himself as class rep because of course he does, but he gets intimidated by Chloe and backs down. But even then, I still think that this dude is so stupid that he would have voted for her anyway, even if he was running against her. Smooth brain does not cover it when it comes to Kim. And it turns out that the majority of the class has just straight up been threatened by Chloe into not running. And so Marinette's left with no choice but to run herself, much to Miss Bustier's delight. And honestly, Miss Bustier, I get it. I get it. Imagine being the teacher of this class and being forced to deal with Chloe as your class rep. Ugh, no thanks. I'd be hyped for literally anybody else to run as well, and mega hyped to get rid of her. And I mean, the class looks pretty excited about it too. And it's very clear to me that Marinette should easily sweep this election by a landslide. Literally everybody except Sabrina and Chloe like her, and almost nobody likes Chloe. And so, Chloe has to dive into the classic bag of tricks that every single modern politician, and realistically probably every politician ever in history uses. Don't bother actually telling people all the good things you can do and how, just make sure everybody understands that you are less bad than the other person. This is both funny and also sad and very true. They got it spot on. That depresses me. We head back to the bakery and Marinette gets a face sign from Alia, who tells her that Chloe's organised a private autograph signing with Jagged Stone for her class campaign launch. <laughs> what? What's going on here? How much are they paying this man so she can win her class election? And Andre's just going along with it. Are you seriously telling me I'm supposed to think he's a misunderstood and battered man in season five who has no choice but to give in? Oh, give me a break. And when Marinette leaves to go and see what's up, Sabrina makes her way inside the bakery, tricks her way inside their family home, and burgles Marinette's room looking for dirt on her. And I mean, don't forget, her dad is the head of police, right? My god. Moving on, we get a look at the losing candidate for mayor, the fencing instructor from the school, 
who seems pretty upset. And we've already established that to even be the mayor, you have to sit on the council, so yeah, he lost, but it's not the end of the world, right? Still gonna get 4,000 euros a month for your services. Pull your head in. But no, he just seems pretty angry. And to explain himself, he tells Adrian that at one time, back in the day, his ancestor Darkblade conquered Paris and held it until he was overthrown by a wealthy Frenchman, who I assume restored it to the French king. How is this something to brag about? I'm not a massive history buff in terms of French history, but I'm pretty sure that Paris hasn't been occupied all that often. And in the era that it looks like he's talking about with swords and armor and all that, maybe we're talking the Hundred Years' War, which is when Paris got occupied by the Duchy of Burgundy and then by the Kingdom of England. So this Dark Blade guy was perhaps a big deal from one of these places. And so our instructor, who wants to be the mayor of Paris in France, is bragging about being descended from a notable enemy of France who occupied and ruled over the capital city with an iron fist. Who's going to vote for him now? <laughs> like, it's all right to be descended, but to brag about it and like it and be angry that the people then overthrew him and restored French rule? Dude's cringe. <laughs> but yeah, for some reason, the news, they still care about this nobody and they enter the school, private property, to confront him about all of this illegally. And so they get chased away by another teacher. And so Gabe chooses this time to strike. And he's really harsh to him too, calling him a loser and an utter failure. Absolutely no chill from Gabe today, my god. And so we see him transform, but not before he's harassed by the news guy again. Dude should really be suing them for this shit. Leave the poor man alone. But yes, he gets transformed into Darkblade and turns them into his knights, declaring he's going to conquer Paris and overthrow Andre. He creates a whole heap of different knights, Adrian transforms and confronts him, and it looks like they're about to have a really epic battle. A sword fight, confrontation, hell yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's do it. And then it cuts away to Sabrina. Seriously? Come on, nobody wants to see that. Give me some action. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, Sabrina's apparently the dumbest person ever, as her idea of how to embarrass Marinette and ruin her campaign involves stealing her ball of yarn or her screwdriver. And this is the person that Chloe gets to do her homework and her assignments. My god, how are they passing classes? Next up, we're over at City Hall, where Marinette arrives to find that everybody in class has gotten a CD signed from Jagged Stone himself, whilst also being promised free tickets to his concert. And he seems to be a bit of a megastar, so I presume the tickets would be rather expensive normally. So at this point, I am also voting for Chloe. It's just a class rep position. Who cares? Give me the tickets. And then we get back to the good stuff. The sword fight, which lasts all of two seconds before it ends and Cat Noir is forced to escape. <sighs> Okay. I mean, yeah, that's very enjoyable. Oh man, season one was so bad for its action in hindsight. Like, come on, give me more of the fight. So lame. And then it's back to City Hall where Sabrina reveals that she has the diary, but it's stuck in the box, which is also stuck on her hand. And whilst Marinette tries to make the class understand that these expensive concert tickets are somehow not worth it, and let's be real, the class rep has no real power, so once again, just take the tickets, kids. But Chloe then pulls her aside and threatens to expose all of her secrets once she's able to get a chainsaw and remove the box from Sabrina's hand. Hmm, Chloe using a chainsaw on an intricate and small little box? Recipe for disaster. I'd watch that on pay-per-view. But before she can go any further with her threats, Darkblade rolls up on them with his trumpets and his knights and threatens Andre, who hides. And why wouldn't you, really? Who the hell is actually going to square up with this crazy knight in full armor with a ludicrously big sword backed by an army of thugs? No thanks. Cat Noir arrives, he slaps around the goons before facing off with Darkblade, and once again, we cut away from the fight. But this time, I actually enjoyed cutting away, because we got some truly funny moments of Jagged Stone thinking he can save the day and calm down his crazed fans with the power of his music only to fail immediately and get transformed. Ah, oh, the humor in season one, it doesn't always stick the landing, but when it's good, it's good, and this one was good. Marinette then has her moment where she springs into action and gets everybody to safety before she turns into Ladybug for the big climax of the episode where they battle Darkblade. Oh, and we get to watch the entire transformation. Yeah, I do not miss watching both full transformations every single episode to eat up time, that's for sure. Anyway, the heroes team up, they fight the goons, the goons use catapults to get out onto the roof, Darkblade puts the flag atop City Hall, declares himself king, and I mean, somebody should tell this goof that France does not like having kings anymore. They do not play nicely with having kings. 
Also, he sends out a dark wave that covers all of Paris and turns everybody into his goons. Except Marinette and Adrian, for some reason. Bit plot armory there, I reckon. Like, why would the energy start from the outside in? He cast the thing from the flag. Surely it would go outwards from the flag. Ugh. Anyway, it was nice to see Cat Noir actually being relevant in this story and him not getting clowned on and being saved by Ladybug at the end. He actually does something. He fights Darkblade whilst Ladybug sets up the winning hit. And so we see that happen. Ladybug hits him with a wind-up Ladybug toy that tickles him, even though he's wearing full plate armor. There's so many layers that make that up. There's no chance he was getting tickled by the... Oh, whatever. I'll have to just accept it. And then she smashes the sword on the stone, which breaks it, which also begs the question, why didn't it break when it was hitting Cat Noir's staff all those times, which is made of metal? Just as strong as stone, you'd think. So what's going on here? Ugh. Once again, oh well. You know how it goes. They de-evilize things, yada yada yada. And then what do you know, Marinette gets elected class rep as everybody's figured out that Chloe tried to steal her diary and that Chloe really just genuinely sucks as a person. And Marinette doesn't. But still, those concert tickets. Oh. And so, yeah, that's the end of the episode. And this one I actually liked. Like, genuinely really liked. Decent episode. Not too much cringe, not too many plot holes. It was just a bit of fun. Could use some fine tuning, but far above the standard of much of season one, that's for sure. And so with all that being said, these have just been my opinions and I'd like to hear yours. Did you like this episode? Maybe you disliked this episode. You agree with what I had to say? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know.